morning. Welcome to our service this morning, Sunday the 11th of October. It's really good to be back with you. It seems a long time since I've been sat here recording this sermon, so it's really good to be here this morning. First of all, some really exciting news. Um, if you were in church last week or if you um, have remembered from years gone by, we have supported Rwanda and the um, Ministry of Surf a charity set up to help the survivors of the Rwandan genocide 26 years ago. Uh, Sam Hunt, the deputy head at our local secondary school, um, is uh, an integral part of that charity. And on Saturday, uh, she was awarded the MBE for her work in Rwanda and her work with the charity, which is just such exciting news. So congratulations to Sam. Today we are thinking about the kingdom of heaven based on a parable of Jesus from Matthew's gospel. But first of all, a reading from Ian. Thank you, Ian. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. And now our gospel reading, which comes from Matthew chapter 22. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Praise to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves maltreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you can find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus frequently used parables to teach his disciples and those who wanted to learn from him. Parables use familiar situations to teach an important lesson. The parable from Matthew today is one of those that's not so easy to think about and I don't think I've ever actually preached on it before. Maybe because it holds some challenging issues. So here goes today. First of all, there are some things... <coughs> First of all, there are some things that we need to understand about a first century Jewish perspective. First of all, there are some things that we need to understand from a first century Jewish perspective, things that we need to have a grasp of in order to be under, able to understand more easily what Jesus is teaching. Matthew is actually the only gospel that records this parable and he includes it after Jesus has ridden into Jerusalem on the donkey just a week or so before his death. It's the third in a sequence of parables that Jesus uses to teach the chief priests and Pharisees in the temple about the kingdom of heaven. He uses the familiar setting of a wedding banquet, but not any bed wedding banquet. This one was a banquet given by a king for his son's wedding. Those hearing the story would have automatically linked such a wedding banquet with teaching about the kingdom of God and the promised arrival of the Messiah. If you read carefully, you will see that this was not the first invitation to the banquet. The passage says the slaves called those who had been, who had been invited to the wedding banquet. It was customary in those days to give two invitations. The first asked invited the people along to be a guest at the wedding. The second was to, to say that all was ready and it was time for them to come. A modern day equivalent may be when a save the date card is sent out, sometimes a year or so in advance of, for a wedding couple, asking people to keep the date free. And then, just a few months before the actual wedding takes place, the official wedding invitation is sent out. For Jesus' listeners, they would have expected that having accepted the first invitation, it would have been incredibly bad manners to turn down the second. But in the parable, the guests turned down the second invite, not once, but twice. The king's slaves are sent out to call those who had been invited, but they would not come. So the king tried again and told the slaves to stress the refusing guests. Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fat calves, everything is ready, come to the banquet. The guests refused a second time, making light of the invitation and going about their everyday business. And then there's an awful development. The slaves who have been sent out with the invitation are maltreated and even killed by the guests themselves. The king wanted to hold the banquet and he wanted guests there. So having been turned by, down by the initial guests, the king invites anyone who will come, good or bad. The slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found. And then the twist that is really hard to hear and to understand. A man attends not wearing the correct attire, not wearing a wedding robe. Given the situation, you would think that the king would just be glad that he was there. But no, the king challenges the man as to why he is not wearing a wedding robe. The man is speechless. And so the king has him thrown into the outer darkness. So what is all this about? We may be thinking, how did the man have time to suddenly find the right clothes when he wasn't expecting the invitation? Well, the wedding guests would have been given garments to wear and it was unthinkable to the king that someone would refuse to wear the robe he was offered. It would be hugely insulting to the host 
who could be forgiven for thinking that the guest was arrogant or reluctant to participate in the banquet. So, given these various in explanations about the illustration that Jesus uses, what does this parable teach us about the kingdom of heaven? The king had invited the guests, but they were too busy with everyday events to attend the banquet. God had initially invited ancient Israel to his banquet, but over time they failed to show up for the big event. Remember that this parable is recorded after Jesus had entered Jerusalem on a donkey. People had cheered him then. You remember, Hosanna, Hosanna, they'd laid coats out on the floor for him. But in just a few days time, they would reject him and crucify him. Many people in Jerusalem did not accept his call. So then his call went out to everyone. Jesus had shown love and invitation to everyone. He had invited the Pharisees, but they often turned him down. Jesus invited others who accepted the invitation, the blind and the lame, the prostitutes and the tax collectors, the good and the bad. So why was the man cast out, rejected? Because it's not enough to just turn up if we refuse to wear the right clothes. We need to put on the life of Christ. There is a simple agreement, covenant if you like, between the king and the guests, which represents the covenant between us and God. God's grace is on offer for everyone and a faithful and grateful response from us forms the covenant. The ancient people of Israel had failed to accept the calling. The slaves in the parable had been killed, they'd been ignored, they'd been despised. They can be compared to the prophets that God sent out to ancient Israel to tell of what was coming, to tell that the Messiah was on his way. The latest of those prophets was John the Baptist, who had been killed just before Jesus told this parable. The invite from Jesus to many, including the ancient Israelites, had been turned down. The agreement of how to behave in that covenant was not, is not, was not always upheld. See, God loves everyone. Serial killers, arrogant business people, manipulative parents, the kindest and most loving people that we know. <clears throat> <clears throat> he loves everyone. And the invitation to the wedding banquet of all times is there for all. But he hates sinful actions and the consequence of these. He loves each of us enough to offer us healing and transformation. God is holy, he's pure, he's good. And so the wrong behaviour cannot continue to play out at the banquet. The clothes, if you like, need to be changed. This parable tells the kingdom of God, tells us about the kingdom of God, that it's available to everyone. Everyone is invited. But it's not enough to simply accept the invitation and maybe not turn up or maybe turn up, but in the wrong clothes, like the man without the wedding clothes. The Pharisees turned up but in arrogance and self-importance. God's love and grace is freely given and in response we are to live according to his will for failure to do so makes a mockery of his love. The wedding clothes are a picture of the righteousness needed to enter the kingdom of heaven. No matter how good or bad we are, we cannot attain holy righteousness on our own. We need to accept the wedding invitation and then the wedding robe. The garment of righteousness is for everyone, but not everyone chooses to put it on. 
the wedding robe, the garment of righteousness, is the life of Christ. The robe given to us, the, the cleansing given to us through Jesus, his resurrection on the cross, his death on the cross and his resurrection. This parable is uncomfortable because we want to be inclusive. We don't like thinking about God's judgment or his demanding standard of holiness. But just as we teach our children that actions have consequences, so we too, as invited guests to the banquet of all banquets, need to learn and accept that our actions have consequences and our moral choices matter. Life is not a game where it will all turn out happily ever after, no matter what we do. There are consequences to our choices, consequences to our actions. God's forgiveness is an awesome mystery. But what we do, our actions, our thoughts, our words matter too. God is a righteous God. He is pure and holy and just. And only when we accept what Jesus did for us on the cross and then clothe ourselves in Christ, do we actually have a heavenly father. God is always God. But we need to accept the call and put on Christ if we want to enter the covenant and know what it is to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. And then we shall celebrate at the most incredible banquet. You can read about it in the book of Revelation. It says, the spirit and the bride say, come and let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. God has planned this ultimate banquet for all time. The Israelite people were invited and they didn't all attend. Some turned up but not ready to take on the righteousness of Christ, the gift offered to us. God's love is for all. God's invitation to the banquet is for everyone. Do you accept the invitation? Or do you, like those in the parable, turn the invitation down and just carry on with everyday life? If you accept the invitation, do you fully enter into the covenant with God and put on the clothes of Christ, trusting in Christ for your salvation and your place at the banquet? That wedding robe offered to us by Christ, the life of Christ, we need to accept and receive and put on. And then we need to live as much as we are able in a way that is worthy of that calling. In a way that Paul writes to the letter in his letter to the Philippians. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard. And the God of peace will be with you. And now Brenda is going to lead us in some intercessions. Thank you, Brenda. Invited by our God, we are here to pray together. Lord, even in your wonderful world, this feels like a bad time, with too much going wrong and not enough going right. Our feelings about this are subjective, of course. Only you see the whole picture. But all the same, we pray for our world and leaders everywhere. Some of them we mostly agree with and some we don't but we must depend on them for leadership and for better times ahead. And the best of them depend on us, 
citizens and voters to make good leadership possible. Show each of us our part and enable us to play it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Coronavirus is gaining ground, Lord, here and everywhere, and it seems a winter of restrictions lie ahead. Give us patience, a sense of humour and good judgement about it. Protect those we love. Comfort those who suffer from it. Su support and strengthen those on the front line. And bring good out of bad as only you can. And we thank you for the many, many people who serve us all daily by dealing with the effects of the virus cheerfully and occasionally and at some risk to themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church here in Owlsmoor and for those who manage to get to church to worship together and for those who, for whatever reason, worship at home via various technologies. We pray for our forthcoming APCM and for those preparing for a term of office on the PCC. We pray for your spirit to stir the heart of those who can be of service in this church community to do your will. May your light shine through them and out into our wider community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those known to us who are suffering from unemployment, accident, sickness, loneliness and in any other way. We remember too those who are near the end of their lives and those who mourn. You understand human suffering Lord, you have been there. Comfort and strengthen those who are suffering today and those who care for them. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, have a good week. Next Sunday is our APC, PCM, our annual church meeting, which will follow on after the Sunday morning service. If you can, do be there. Don't forget your masks. Take care. Have a good week. And rejoice in that invitation that Christ offers to all of us to be a part of his kingdom. God bless. <laughs>